Welcome to part two of my four-part series where we tackle Italian classics, spaghetti bolognese and deep dish lasagna. In part one, we made the bolognese sauce. And in this episode, we'll be making a fantastic low-carb pasta, which can be used for lasagna, spaghetti, tagliatelle, ravioli, or anything else you can cut it into. Get that pan of water on, we're making keto pasta. So along with bread, potatoes and rice, one of the main things people really miss when they start on a low carb or keto lifestyle is pasta. But with lots of trial and error, I've developed a pretty great low carb recipe that is far easier to make than you might imagine and works incredibly well to make your classic lasagna or cut into spaghetti for our bolognese. So let's get started. Now this recipe is easily gonna make enough for a couple of meals for you. Or you can even dry this stuff out, leave it in an airtight container in the fridge, and you can use that a later date. That's gonna be really convenient for you. So for this recipe, you're gonna need 160 grams of vital wheat gluten, 40 grams of plain protein whey powder, 40 grams of lupin flour, four eggs, two tablespoons of olive oil, half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. That needs to be really finely ground half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and finally, we're gonna use about a tablespoon or so of cold water just to help bind. Delete. Yes, you know me and kitchen gadgets by now, and one of the most labor-saving toys in the low-carb cook kitchen is my set of pasta rollers and cutter attachments for my Kenwood Chef. Now, lots of stand mixers have this option, and if, like me, you plan on making a lot of pasta over the years to come, well, it's worth the investment in these but you can buy a hand-cranked pasta roller and cutter really cheaply on a site like Amazon or eBay, and they work just as well. Just expect a bit of a workout in the process. Now, I use my stand mixer for many things in my cooking, and mixing pasta is definitely one of them. So I'm starting with the bare mixer and standard paddle, and into that, I'm gonna add all of the ingredients except the water just to get this mix started. So in goes my vital wheat gluten. Next, we have our 40 grams of protein powder. Then we're gonna add lupin flour. Now I love the yellow color of the lupin flour. That's gonna make this look even more authentic, like pasta. We have our half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. That's just gonna help things stay nice and fluid and rubbery. Then we have our pink Himalayan salt. Now remember, grind that up quite fine. You don't want large chunks of salt coming in your pasta. That's not gonna be very nice. Then we want to add four eggs. Just crack those into a bowl first to make sure you don't get any shell in with this. I'm still trying to master cracking eggs on the side of a bowl, but can't get that. Doesn't matter how you do it, so long as they end up in the mixture, it's all good. There, no shell, perfect. Throw those in. And finally, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm not gonna measure this out. I'm just gonna let that glug in nicely. There, now just pop that down and get that on and blasting nicely. And really quickly, that whole mixture is just gonna to come together. Yeah, that's looking really good and coming together. Now we'll add just a little bit of our water in to help that bind one final time. We're just gonna let that mix until it really comes together and has worked that gluten. The gluten's gonna become stretchy and we'll have a really nice pasta dough. Don't be afraid to give it a couple of quick blasts just to really beat that pasta mix together nicely. There, just while that's mixing, I'm gonna have a quick clear up. There, that's looking really fantastic now. If we just pop that off, take this. Look how elastic that's become. That's like a really fantastic yellow pasta mixture, already looking just like traditional pasta. So I'm gonna leave that aside now for about 10 minutes to take on the last of that moisture. And while that's happening, we're gonna get our bench ready. Welcome back. So. Our bench is ready and dusted, and I'm gonna fit my first pasta roller to the Kenwood. Now this works the same way as a manual hand cranked machine. It just progressively rolls the pasta thinner and thinner to about a number four. It just does it very precisely. 
there. Now I'm using lupin flour on my bench. Lupin flour, the same ingredient that we used in the pasta itself. And of course we don't want this to stick to our bench. So I'm gonna bring this over now, give it a rub around. Now we wanna create long sausage roll shapes and then roll them out flat. So the easiest thing to do is shape that already. And I'm gonna use my bread and pasta cutter and just cut that into four equal sections. Set four of those aside. And the quick and easy, put some more loop and flour on. This is very sticky. You really don't want it to stick to your, your worktop. I tend to squish mine out to shape first. And then I have a large rolling pin. Make sure you dust your rolling pin as well. You don't want this to stick to that. Now I go sideways first on mine over the length and that just starts it going out to a width and then start making it longer. Now you might think, how are you going to get all the pasta you need out of these four, what look like small chunks, but you'll be really amazed when we start putting this through the roller, how quickly that is gonna spread out and get a lot longer. Keep adding flour as you go, that's really important. Turn it sideways again, give it a roll that way. The aim is to keep this as flat and even across the sides as possible as you're rolling it out. There, now that's good enough to start. We're gonna start our roller here on a zero. Zero is actually the widest setting on there. Now also, before I put it through here, I'm gonna take one of my sharp knives and just very carefully trim off the edges and leave a nice flat edge on there. That's gonna help it get guided through the cutters more easily and you can always reuse these in another chunk later on. Now I like to do these one at a time. If you try and do them all at the same time, that's a lot of picking up, putting down. This is just so much easier. So I'm turning my machine on just to its slowest speed. And then place that in the top and let the machine guide it through. And of course, if you're hand cranking one at this stage, well, sorry, that's a bit more work there. Okay, so now we'll take that down to the next setting. That's gonna roll it just progressively thinner. It's already smelling like pasta in here, this wonderful aroma coming off of this. It's okay to put this through each setting a couple of times. That's really gonna help get to that lovely end thickness you want. Again, take it down another notch. Now we're on number two. Now I have to tell you that before I ever started on a keto or low carb lifestyle, I'd never made pasta myself. Like everyone, I just bought it from the shops in dry packages because it was just quick and easy and convenient. And I know that keto cooking isn't always the most convenient thing, but I have to say this has become one of my absolute favorite things to do in the kitchen when making a meal. This stuff is incredibly elastic with all that gluten and the xanthan gum in there. You really don't have to worry about trying to be delicate with this. There now, look how long that one piece has become just from a small piece of dough like that. It goes much further than you think. Now, while I'm finishing putting through these pieces, let's take a look at our macros for this. Welcome back. Now don't be afraid to cut these in half if they're getting a bit too long to manage. This is one of my final sheets going through on setting number four. I love this, it, it's hypnotic. It brings this childlike glee into making food. And when this is done, you can keep it as flat sheets to use as lasagna, or you could cut ravioli from it, or so many other things. This paste is also soft enough that if you have one of the attachments that will push the pasta through and cut it into shells and other shapes, you could absolutely try that too. But for me today, the next thing I'm gonna do is change my attachment and actually make this into some spaghetti. So we have a spaghetti cutter here. You might be able to see it has these very fine teeth in there, two sets of rollers that as the pasta goes through, it's just gonna be naturally cut into thin strands. So I'm just gonna fit that onto the front of our machine. 
And again, turn it on just to number one, just slowest speed. And you might want to pre-cut these into shorter lengths. Sometimes a pizza wheel makes a really good cutter for pasta instead of going along with a knife and ruining your worktop. And just take your strip, feed that through the cutter. There we are. And that will easily break up in the pan. You get these wonderful thin pieces that just fall off. Now, if you're gonna dry these out for later, I highly recommend get yourself one of these. It's a simple pasta dryer. Opens up and just start layering your pasta over there. And you can keep that. Dry it out overnight in a warm place or just leave it on the worktop. That will dry out really nicely. And as I said, you can store that in an airtight container, pop it in the fridge, and that'll last a few weeks or so quite happily. And you can come back for convenience and use it again another time. I've swapped my bolognese at the moment for a big pan of boiling water. We're gonna make sure we add plenty of salt into that for taste. There, again, we're using pink Himalayan salt. The minerals and nutrients in this are far superior to white table salt, and they form a really important part of your keto diet. So make sure you do pick that up. You can get it in most supermarkets and certainly online. And we're gonna take our strands, you will notice a lot of this didn't break up immediately, but it will break up in the water. We just pull that out. Put that in our boiling water. Just like regular pasta, it won't be long until that has cooked through. But look at that. Tell me that doesn't look like a perfect piece of pasta to you. There we go, give that a stir through. You'll see while that's boiling away in the water, again, just like normal pasta, it takes on that same milky white look, that slight yellow tinge, and those strands will all start to break up as it cooks. And while that just boils away, we'll just move a few things around and get ready to serve our amazing pasta. Look at this. We'll just let that drain off, have our dish ready, place that in. There. Just exchange those back around. And come back to that beautiful bolognese that we made earlier. Put a good healthy serving in with our pasta. So there you are, your perfect low carb spaghetti bolognese that you can enjoy on a regular basis as part of your low carb lifestyle. If you enjoyed this, why not check out our full baked lasagna video or the four part series where I show you both. Please give this video a thumbs up, share it on your favorite socials and don't forget to subscribe to the low carb cook and ding that bell to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching The Low Carb Cook. If you enjoyed this episode, why not watch one of our playlists or this recommended video? Click on the logo below to subscribe. Join us on any of our social pages. Or if you'd like to show a bit more love, you can support the channel on buymeacoffee.com using the link below. For even more great stuff, check out the website, thelowcarbcook.com.